welcome as a shepherd doth his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him for the hand of him that was stronger than he, or from the hand of him that was stronger than he. In other words, God said, I have bought you back. I have purchased you. I have claimed something for you. I have purchased something. Now hear this. I have purchased something for you, and I have signed it over into you to be your possession. I'm about to get excited just telling you what that means. Praise the Lord. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. That means presence of God. And shall now together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat, for wine, for oil, for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a well-watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. A healing is coming. A healing is coming. It's on the way. It's in the word of God. God who cannot lie has promised this. This prophecy is twofold. This prophecy is concerning something that hadn't even took it, taken place yet was about to take place. This was before Babylonian captivity and Jeremiah prophesied there's a captivity coming. You're going to be scattered. I'm going to allow it to teach you a lesson to come back to me. And I'm going to allow this to happen to make you realize just how resourceful I have been to you all of your lives. But because you would not love me and serve me and honor me, there are enemies that I'm not necessarily sending, but you need to know you are allowing them for preferring them over me. And when they come in and they take up their boat in your life, it's going to send bondage into your life. But I love you because of a promise I made to your father, Abraham. I will not let you go. I will never leave you, abandon you, or forsake you. My eyes are upon Israel. And as my eyes are upon you, I will keep the flock of God. Peter wrote, 2,800 years later, he says, keep the flock of God and not with oversight thereof. Talking to the church, the pastors, the church leaders, but he was also talking to the people. Stay knitted together. Stay in God's presence and allow God to be God. I think one of the greatest needs that believers need to have today is a prophecy of hope. I think we need to know that hope is on the way. I think that we need to know that we're not at the end of the rope. I think that we need to know and realize and get a new spirit of anticipation that God is still God, that he has not changed. He said, forever my word is settled in heaven. In fact, he said, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word shall not pass away. He said, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber, and he will never sleep. I choose to believe that the Lord is about to release something extraordinary in our midst in the 70s. I don't know if it was Wally Fowler or who it was, but he wrote a song. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. I believe that this morning with all of my spirit. With everything that's in me, God has been churning on the inside of me this week and telling me it's time to raise the, elevate the sights of your people and tell them to re-enter the arena of faith and have hope one more time because God is not through with us yet. I wish somebody would give the Lord a clap off in your place. Help me preach this morning. I believe God desires to release extraordinary favor. Now, the favor of God is beyond measure. I said the favor of God is beyond measure. It means that God is smiling on you. It means that God is taking delight in you. It means that God is granting your requests. 
That means that you're living under the glory cloud of God, just like the children of Israel did in the wilderness. Uh, they had men every morning. They had a pillar of fire by night, and they had a cloud by day. Uh, their clothes never wore out. Uh, their shoes never wore out. There was never any sickness or disease among them because God's glory had come down in their midst. I choose to believe that God is about to release extraordinary finances. I'm believing that you're going to be debt free this year. I'm believing that God, I believe that you're going to see slips in the mail paid in full. I believe that you're going to get mailbox money. I believe that people are going to come up to you and say, God has told me to give you this piece of money. Don't know what it's for. Don't know what you need. All I know is, is that God has spoken to me. I believe that God is about to release extraordinary, supernatural, financial favor in your life. If you're ready for that, give the Lord a clap offering of praise. I believe that God is about to release extraordinary breakthroughs. How many need a breakthrough? I said, how many need a breakthrough? How many are believing God for a breakthrough? How many believe that when you take communion, as I've challenged you to start doing that, when you take communion, Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body which, is provoking for, which, was, which was broken for you. Do you understand that bread means and represents in most of the Old Testament, it represents provision given to you and only for, for you from God? Do you understand that Jesus said, I am the bread which has come down to you from heaven? Heaven, do you understand that if you have Jesus in your heart, you have provision, all that you need, it's in your life, it's in your soul, it's in your spirit. God is about to cause a breakthrough in your life. I believe God is about to release extraordinary healings. I don't care if it's a headache or high blood pressure. I don't care if it's kidney stones or cancer. I don't care if it's a bad back. I don't care if it's arthritis. I don't care if it's sugar diabetes. I don't care what the sickness is. I, I believe it's time for God to start shaking the heavens and the earth and moving our lives with healing. He said the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Mark it down. I speak prophet prophetically. A healing is coming in Jesus' name. I believe that God is about to release in word of life signs and wonders that we've only heard about all of our lives, amen. I feel like that the Lord is about to cause or start breaking things loose. Now, I love to hear the old timers. I guess I'm considered an old timer by some people nowadays. But I love to hear the old timers start talking about just in plain English, something is about to happen. God is about to move. I feel a stirring in my soul. I remember preaching for men years ago, a black preacher, Willie Groves. He would start preaching and we'd start sharing. He said, oh, Brother Johnny, I feel God messing with me right now. I never had heard that before, but I sure had felt it before. You know when God's moving on the inside of you. Jeremiah said, I decided I wasn't going to tell anybody else about God because it's brought too much persecution and trouble. I've been made a liar. I've been made to look bad. Uh, things that God has given me. And Jeremiah didn't even realize uh, that some of the things that he forecasted and prophesied was not to take place until our era, 2,800 years later. But he says, I just made up my mind. I wasn't going to say anything more about God. He said, but the more I kept God to myself, it became like fire shut up in my bones. And I just couldn't keep it to myself. Oh, somebody give God a praise offering. I believe that God is about to melt, multiply. I believe that we're going to start recovering some of our losses. How many have lost some things lately? I said, how many have lost some things lately? Oh, did you know that they're scriptural? If you know that it was a spiritual attack, listen to me, I'm trying to prophetically teach you this morning. Do you understand if what your losses, 
that you have experienced have come to you because an all-out enemy attack? Did you know as a believer, as a, bo a child of God, according to Proverbs, uh, if a thief takes from you because he's greedy, you can despise, you can declare of him or demand of him seven times more back to you than what he's taken. I think it's time for us to recover. God said to David in 1 Samuel chapter 30, when David said, shall I pursue? He said, go and pursue and you shall recover all and not one soul will be lost. I'm here to tell you it's time for us to become our debt collectors and take back what the thief has stolen from us in the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm praying for a shift. Now I know what that means. We're going to another gear. It's going to start happening, happening exponentially. You like that word? Faster. He says in the, in, the, in the book of Amos, there's coming a day in the last days when the reaper will overtake the sower. How in the world, Brother, Brother Johnny, can you get a harvest before you plant the seed? I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But God said, uh, while the sower is out in the field sowing the seed, uh, I'm going to send the bag men. Uh, they're coming in and they're taking the harvest uh, before the plant comes out of the ground uh, and the seed is on the stalk. Uh, I'm telling you, a harvest is coming in your life. Well, I like it, don't you? There's a shift. Everybody say shift. There's a shift coming. God's going to change the order of things. Amen. Uh, enough of this. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. I'll say fully on that. Something good is about to happen to you. Amen. The bread is in the oven. Praise God. Help is on the way. Hope is about to turn things around in your life. I believe that we're about to see, and I'm praying for breakthroughs. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, I'm praying for breakthroughs. How many need a breakthrough? I'm praying for it. I speak breakthrough. I speak angels in your life. Listen to me. You have the authority, according to Isaiah chapter 45. He says, command you now the works of my hands. God doesn't have to step off his celestial throne and come down here. Psalms says that, that those who fear the Lord are encamped about with an array of angels. There's angels all around you in this room right now. Put them to work. I said, put them to work. Tell the angels. He said, surely goodness and mercy. Oh, if we ever needed anything in this last hour is goodness and mercy. And then somebody came along and said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In other words, I will stay in God's presence where there is provision, where there is protection, where there is power, for there is an unlimited resource because God is in my life. Oh, yeah. Praying for breakthrough. I said I'm praying for breakthrough. I'm praying for signs and wonders. I don't know what you think about it. But there's been enough preaching in this church and in this pulpit to save the world. And sometimes we just need to come in and just get out of the way. Have our hearts ready. Have our minds set. Have our anticipation at a gauge that there's no way in the world, no matter what song system we're on, the praise gets, the team gets up here and sings. We're already got our sights elevated to a place we've never been before and we come in anticipating, inspecting and are going to be downright disappointed if God doesn't do what we know and believe he's about to do because of our faith in God. Yeah. Amen, somebody. I want to see blinded eyes open. I am praying, declaring and believing that Mike Jones is going to have a new set of eyes. Thank God that Brenda's healed, that they were able to do surgery. But I declare and decree that it's not going to be the way the devil has designed it to be. 
Well, how do you know that? I got a scripture for you, honey. Hang this in your ear, devil. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment thou shalt condemn, for this is the heritage of the Lord. Not only am I saying it now, but I'll say it tomorrow. I'll say it all next week. I'll say it all this year. The God of glory is still inhabiting the praises of his people. I'm believing God for cancers to dry up, for kidney stones to disappear. Shout out my condola bosatai. I am believing God that your children are coming home, that addictions are going to be broken, that curses that have lasted for generations are going to be pulled down, that this church and your life and your home and your walk with God is going to be a strong and mighty tower and no evil shall prevail against it because that's your heritage in God. Give him a clap offering of praise. I'm believing God to heal the whole. I'm believing God to heal the whole man, the whole woman, not just heal you, but make you whole. Ten lepers saw Jesus on the road, and they cried out, Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. And the Bible said, as they went, they saw that they were delivered. But only one came back and gave praise and honor to Jesus for his healing. And Jesus said, were there not ten? Where are the, where are the other nine? He could not answer for them, but Jesus said to the one that was obedient and faithful and appreciative for what he had done, he says, Thou art made whole. What leprosy might have done in the past to him, maybe dropped a finger when God said, Thou art made whole. The finger came back. The ear came back. Whatever was missing in his life, it was restored because his spirit was set toward God and he returned to Jesus with a heart of thanksgiving and praise, acknowledging that God is his healer. I'm believing God to deliver and restore the whole man. And I believe in God for deliverances. You know, sometimes you can get bundled because you tried to help somebody else. Sometimes you can born into bondages and you inherit it. You live with it because you're trying to do the right thing by your family, by the responsibility, by obligations that are set upon you because you're the alpha person in that particular arena. They look to you. They turn to you. So you inherit stuff. You live with stuff. You make sure that everybody else is okay and you go without. No more. I'm praying over this church that this, come, this church will become a church of deliverance. It'll be a way-making center. It'll be a healing center. It'll be a restoring center. I'm telling you, a healing is coming because God is looking for a church that will believe him for the miracles, the signs, and the wonders. Give him praise and glory. I am believing God for curses to be broken. Some of you may be living under a curse and don't even realize it. Some of you have worked hard and you've tried, you've prayed, you've fasted, you pay your tithe or you give your tithe. You live in obedience to the best you know how to God and there's just something that keeps lingering. That's a curse. God did not want us and does not want us to live under curses. Thank God Almighty, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from every curse. You are not an occupant, or your, your vessel is not a place of vacancy for the devil, or his demons, or any sickness, or, or anything he tries to heap on your life. You are special. You are a privilege. The Bible says, Peter says, we are a peculiar people, zealous of a purchased generation. God paid the royal price for you, and Satan violates the laws of God when he touches you with any kind of curse. So I believe in God today that the curse is going to be broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. I feel like that there are people that we know they may not be coming here yet, but they're going to. I believe that there are people who have been living with curses for generations. They've accepted it. 
to become a part of their life. I say it's time for you and I to start praying over them and as we partake communion as we pray, as we fast as we read God's word, speak deliverance over their life and that devil that has cursed their family for generations, it's going to be broken, that stronghold is going to be pulled down, you're not a pavilion for the devil or any things that he wants to use to bring attack on your life you are a child of the living God and what could not bind Jesus Christ and hold him in the grave or in hell cannot bind you because Jesus is living on the inside of you. Praise God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The Lord did not put us on this earth to be pulled down by the cares of this life. How many understand that God wants to be your satisfying portion? Amen. I remember the last words that Brother Nelson said to me I, when he was in my office. He says, I'm all right with Jesus, and that's all right with me. Isn't that enough? Jesus is enough. He's all I need, and he's what you need. We're looking for all the wrong places. God is our solution. He is our satisfying portion. I'm all right with Jesus, and that's all right with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now reflected on Jeremiah 31 and 12 for me. Just for me this week. I've been selfish. This has been mine. He said, and their soul shall be as a well-watered garden. Amen. I looked it up in several commentaries, and every one of them related to a healing. And it says, uh, if a healing, the healing that has been a seed in your life because your faith is in Jesus Christ. Healing is a seed that just has to be watered. How do you water it? By praying, by fasting, by reading God's word, by speaking God's word over your life. So I get up every morning and I start speaking as many healing scriptures as I can. One day, I, all I did all day long was speak healing scriptures over me and over you. And I will tell you something. I like the thought, he says, you're going to be the best garden in the community. You're going to have fruit when everybody else can't figure out, well, what's wrong? I'm doing everything I always do. It's your season to have a well-watered garden. It's your season for healing to come in your life, somebody. Hallelujah. Mm. I wish somebody else would preach this. I'd be shouting right now. Isaiah 62, verse 4. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but shall be called Hepzibah. Everybody say Hepzibah. There's a church just up the road from me, Hepzibah. You know what it means? It means the delight of God. <laughs> it means that God takes pleasure in you. And if God takes pleasure in you, he's going to good stuff on you and in you and all around you. Look at your neighbor and say, I am the delight of the Lord. Y'all don't sound too excited. <laughs> How much more do I need to commit you? Now repent and look at your neighbor with a big smile like that. You've got something they don't have and say, I am the delight of the Lord. Glory be to God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. That means you won't say, well, where's God when I need him? Well, where's God in my life now? As soon as Elisha picked up the mantle that Elijah threw down to him, he went over to that cloak, that mantle, that coat he had, and he knew what to do with it. Praise God, if you've been walking with God, you know what to do with the mantle when it falls on you. He took that mantle. He went back to the Jordan that they just crossed on dry ground. He smote that water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? He smote that water and it parted just like it did for Elijah. No longer will you be forsaken. Neither shall your land be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hepzibah, 
in thy land, Beulah. Now that's a strange term, these two words, delight and marriage. Hepzibah means the delight of the Lord, and Beulah means marriage. So that means that God is going to find his delight, and he's going to be married to it. <laughs> Woo! I'm married to Jesus. He's married to me. I am one in him, and he's one in me. Let no more of the weak say, but let the weak say I'm strong. Come on, somebody, help me here. That means everything I'll touch. If he takes delight in me so much that he's not just engaged to me, he's married to me. Everything I touch prospers, and everything I do, it will manifest. It will exhibit the presence of God in my life. Everywhere I go, the Lord is always with me. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise God. Is he back there? I said, is he back there? Now, when you read this, God will say to Jeremiah, I know what, it, I know what you are now. I know you're in bondage now. But where you are now is not where you're about to be. Oh, I'm going somewhere. <laughs> mm. He says, I'm going to make you a resource to others. You ought to go home and read Deuteronomy 28. He said, I'm going to bless you in the country, and I'm going to bless you in the city. I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. I'm going to cause you to lend and not borrow. You're going to be blessed in the field and you're going to be blessed in your household. He says, whether you're coming or going, my seed is going to multiply inside of you. I will cause you to be blessed. Others will look on you and they will call you blessed because you are Hephzibah and I am married to you. God's going to cause things to shift. There's one scripture that God says, I'm going to bless you. He says, and it's going to be so delightful, you're going to spin like a top. Glory to God. Everywhere you look, the blessings of God are on you. Everywhere you turn, people are calling you blessed. going to cause a shift. When my brother Joel died, they played a song. Joel had just run a revival for me a couple of months earlier. Sodium level dropped to 10. They found the idea of 10 tumors on his brain. They had to pop his eyeballs out to kill him. But he preached his last sermon in my church. He said, it's my time now. I stayed with him for three days and three nights, holding his hand, quoting every scripture on healing I could for three days and three nights. <clears throat> when he left this world, it was one of the greatest feelings of someone going home. I'd ever now seen any of them. But we walked into that service that day, and they started playing, if you could see me now. If you could see me now, I'm walking streets of gold. <laughs> if you could see me now, I'm not sick in my body anymore. God's going to cause a shift, and you're not going to have to die to get it. <laughs> oh, glory. I just feel like telling you that God's about to declare something different over you that you've never heard declared over you before. Is anybody here? I'm telling you, I'm preaching prophetically here today. 
God is about to declare some things over you that you've been wanting to happen all your life. Sister Thelma was telling Deb and I before what service began, she said years ago a prophet came, saw her, and said, you'll, would you believe she's 82 year old? She said, you'll always look young. She said, your son, didn't, know, didn't even know her. She's going to have two sons. One will be a minister of music and they'll be a, a pastor. Both of them came into fruition. Before they were even grown, he prophesied over her life. I'm telling you, God is about to start prophesying things over you that you never even imagined. How can he do that? Because I have not seen, neither has ear heard, nor has it entered in the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. He's already in it over your life. Why not start receiving it? I believe that thankful people are blessed people. People that will live a life of thanksgiving and thankfulness, they're blessed people. And everything Thessalonians says, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. I was born, and you were born, to be satisfied by the Lord. I was born and you were born because of my five, five senses for my appetite to be turned toward God. You have, listen to me, you have to, to develop an addiction, a crave for this world. But every one of us were created and born to serve the Lord. All five of our senses have been honed into God. In other words, when you were nothing but a seed in your mother's womb, God had already created the sensitivity of his presence, your creation, in your very being. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord in this house. So don't tell me you don't know when God's talking to you. Don't tell me you don't know when God's moving in your life. John, Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse 14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, give, give him shall thirst no more. The gospel of Jesus Christ carries with it the full intention of God. Wish I'd turn on the air now. Praise God. We're not supposed to live in sin and shame anymore. I said, we're not supposed to live in sin and shame anymore. We're not supposed to live in sorrow anymore. We can't rewind the clock. We don't get a do-over. But we can't be made new. He said, I, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live, I do not live after the flesh, but after the will of God. Amen. Now, I don't have time to preach on you the whole will of God, but you are no longer supposed to live in captivity. You're no longer supposed to live from paycheck to paycheck, scratching around in the barnyard like a chicken looking for a worm. He said, it's my desire that you be in good health and prosper in all things, even as your soul prospers. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things needful shall be unto you. Psalms 23, he restoreth my soul. <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 20. The Lord has broken through mine enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Therefore, he called the name of that place Bill Parism, I believe the hour is coming for us for breakthrough. Why don't you look at this scripture a minute? David said the Lord broke through like a breaking through of water, and he called that place Bell Parism. For years I looked at this, I don't understand this, because if you know and if you read the Bible at all, 
Baal is the name of an idol false god. I want you to see this. Stay with me because this is important. Baal is the name of a, of a false god. And Ahab and Jezebel turned the entire nation of Israel away from the true and the living God over to Baal. But why did God call the place of breakthrough Baal Terrorism? Because the idol God illegally stole the name of Baal. Baal is one of the names ascribed to God. Not only is God is love, and God is holy, and God is merciful, but God is breakthrough. I said God is breakthrough. If you've got God in your life, and you're struggling, then God is breakthrough for you. Which brings another point. Just because something says it's God, if it brings captivity in your life, it ain't God. It never will be God. It has been God. But if it's God, they'll pass them. That means you are entitled to. If it hasn't come yet, get ready. Pull up your stakes. Broaden your curtains. Revival is coming. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain because he is the God of breakthrough. I may have to take a sabbatical tonight. The Holy Ghost releases this in your life. You know what I find encouraging? Sometimes I can be struggling, nothing going wrong in my spirit, man, but everything going wrong in my flesh. Everything in the world's coming against me, and I'm, I'm struggling to figure out. Stop trying to figure it out. Just, just release it to God. I've quoted the scripture since I've been there. Romans 8, 26, how be it? We don't know what to pray for sometimes as we all, but the Holy Spirit himself will make intercession for you. He knows what's happening and why it's happening. Just start praying in tongues. Oh, somebody going to get upset about that. Care? Praying in the spirit. Oh my God. Because the devil knows when you start praying in the spirit, he can't stay there anymore. Where the spirit of the Lord is, what? There is liberty. I mean, liberty. Him that the Lord is set free is free indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, John 8 and 32. Amen. God revealed himself as Belpazim, and the Holy Ghost released an anointing on their life. I want you to look at Luke 5 and 17, but I think it's on the screen. The power of the Lord was present for Jesus to heal. Now that means if the power of the Lord was present for Jesus to, quote, heal, unquote, that means that there are different anointings of breakthroughs for different things. There's a breakthrough of finance. There's a breakthrough of healing. There's a breakthrough of addiction. There's a breakthrough over rebellion. There's a breakthrough of everything that the child of God is going through. But the Bible said at this particular time and in this particular service that Jesus was in, the power of God was there to heal. And I'm here to tell you this morning, a healing is coming because I feel that God is sending an anointing. I don't know if it took all the sickness for us to come together and start believing for it, but I'm telling you, get ready, get ready, get ready because a healing is coming to our church. Jesus is constantly trying to come and impart peace into our lives. I mean, he's constantly trying to, he, he's the God of breakthrough. Amen, somebody. The anointing for this service is for breakthrough. But a healing is coming. Now, I want you to listen to me as I speak this prophetical of your life. I rebuke discouragement. 
If you're discouraged, I take authority in the Holy Ghost right now. The anointing is on me to say this. I rebuke discouragement. If you're discouraged, start receiving your, your healing of discouragement. I'm anointing to be able to tell you I rebuke sickness. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke sickness. With his stripes we, heal, we were healed. By his stripes ye are healed. I, I die by shanta. I rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. I rebuke disease. Amen. I was called Monday morning to go into the go to the hospital and get some more word, and the gastrologist said, you've got celiac disease. Well, first of all, I've never heard of celiac disease. Amen. I tell you, the devil is coming up with stuff, but no weapon formed against me or you shall prosper. It's already done. It's a done deal. Jesus Christ has already shed blood. Jesus Christ has already received stripes on his back. And I rebuke disease in the name of Jesus. Don't receive it. Don't accept it. Don't let it be in your life. Stand up and say, I am the healed of the Lord. Healing is the children's bread. It's my right. Well, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I, I, I am entitled. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus told the Syrophoenician woman who was not a daughter of covenant. Jesus said to that woman, when the woman said to her, my daughter is at home grievously tormented of the devil. And Jesus to figure out what kind of faith she had. He said, it's not meat. Or it is not common for me to take what has been assigned to my children and give it to dogs. But this woman would not be denied. She said, that's true, Lord. But even the dogs desire the crumbs that fall from the master's table. I don't care how and, and whether you feel healing has already been provided for you. Don't let the devil cause you to miss your deliverance in Jesus' name. I rebuke financial struggle. I've had my nose on the grinding stone more years than I care to think about. I told you about this some time ago. We were pastoring our first church. Didn't have any members. I was so excited when people pulled up in the driveway, I wouldn't even wait for them to get out of the car. I'd open the door for them and hug them before they got out of their seat. I knocked on every door in that town. I did, literally, knocked on every door. Now, we'll forget one time, uh, not on the door, nobody came and they had a mailbox right there. I raised the mailbox, going to put my card in there and a little note, and when I did, wasps come out. I've been stung knocking on doors for Jesus. Went to one house one time, walked through this little gate, didn't have no sign up, no, no beware of the dog. Got up on the front porch, and as soon as I knocked on the door, I looked around, and there were four great things, all of them growling at me. You talk about God give you to leap and run. I leaped off, off that porch and leaped over the fence. <laughs> Shut the gate and locked it. Scared to death what I was doing it, but laughed at the devil when I got in my car. <laughs> God is good. You can walk through a street knee deep in devils and say, get out of my way, devil. I'm coming through. The Spirit of God raise up a standard against you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him, the Bible says. Oh, I feel the Lord. I don't want to go home. If you got to go, leave. I rebuke financial struggle what that's like. Every one of us realize that we got more months than we have money. <clears throat> There's always something else coming up that you didn't expect and plan on. Something's always breaking up, tearing up, breaking down. Come on. If it's just you, it's all right, but it's everybody else you take care of. I don't care how much money you got. It's never enough without Jesus on your side. But if you have Jesus, you'll always have enough. May not be rich, but you'll always have enough. Oh, I feel him. <laughs> I rebuke addictions. Don't you ever think, don't you ever think that you're saved from any attack of the devil. Amen. The torment of unbelief. A healing is coming. Some of you may be in the place where that father was whose son was constantly all of his life thrown in the fire and thrown in the water. Satan trying to kill him. 
He said, Lord, I brought my son to your servants, your disciples, and they couldn't heal him. He said, bring the child to me. While he was coming, the devil threw him on the ground. He began to foam at the mouth. And Jesus said, how long has he been this way? He said, since he was a boy. And Jesus said, do you believe? Now that's the question. Do you believe? Well, Lord, I do believe, but help now only my unbelief. In other words, I started out believing a long time ago. I haven't given up faith, but it's hard for me to believe now after waiting so long and seeing my son suffer, and I can't even work on a full-time job because I'm having to watch my son. One minute he's throwing him in the water trying to drown him. Next minute he's throwing him in the fire trying to burn him. Help me with my unbelief. I rebuke unbelief this morning. I rebuke the spirit of it. I don't care how many times you try it. Get up. Shake the dust off. Re-enter the arena of faith and say, Thank God, I believe. Though you slay me, I'm still going to trust you, God. Hallelujah. I rebuke the spiritual infirmity of the mind. Unstableness. I rebuke the cycle of constantly fighting demonic oppression. You can be saved and be demonically oppressed. Every one of us, if we're fighting for God, if we're serving Jesus, if we're making our mark in society, if your light is shining before men and you're glowing fire in the Father regardless of what you face, every one of us are going to face demonic oppression. I rebuke it. A healing is coming. Look at your neighbor and say, a healing is coming. I break off that power and that spirit of oppression in your household, on the job, in the school. I declare that the truth of God's living word replaces the lie of the devil. I, I prophesy a healing is coming. Say a healing is coming. I declare freedom as a lifestyle in your life. I declare that you will have peace again in your household. I declare that you will have peace in your spirit, that you won't be afraid of things, worried, turbulent all the time. I, I declare that the God of breakthrough is about to come upon you. I declare a healing is coming. Jeremiah said, your soul, my mind, will be like a well-watered, garden it will release health and blessing in your life no I said this but let me say it again God is saying right now in your life I am creating a shift for you stand with me God is declaring, I am going to arrange an anointing to come upon you that you're going to finally discover who I am in your life. Romans 8.31 says, if God be for you, who can be against you? A healing is coming. Did you know according to the Bible even the earth is groaning for a healing? Did you know according to the Bible that saints have always from the Old Testament beginning with Adam and Eve they have prayed for a healing and restoration of their soul from the very beginning? Did you know all through the Bible and throughout time it always has been that the true saints of the living God have always been praying for healing? Did you know that the Holy Spirit is groaning in this world? He's God's agent to this world for 2,000 years and for the entire 2,000 years that the Holy Spirit has been assigned over this church and over your life and over generations past did you know the Holy Spirit has always been groaning for a healing in this world did you know that Jesus 
when he left this earth and went back to glory, starting in John chapter 17, he said, Lord, not only do I pray for this generation, but for those who are not here yet, I pray for them as well. Did you know that in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Jesus forever lives to make intercession? Did you know that Jesus is praying for you right now? A healing is coming in your life. Bow your heads. My God, I don't have to have an altar call. I've already preached and proclaimed. And I feel like that while I was preaching, anointings have been released in your life to receive. Father, pour it on us right now in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands all over the house. God, release it, release it, release it. I know it's already here, but help us to start as a people. Start receiving you've already sent to us. Uh, we've cheated ourselves by not receiving and by not exercising our faith. Uh, but I know in my spirit a healing is coming and a healing is here. I receive it! Jesus, I receive I call it done in the name of the Lord. I call those things that be not as though they were through the of your word in Jesus' name. For it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You praise him now. You pray. You pray. You ask God. You're standing under the anointing glory of God. Tell him what you want in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> anybody need prayer? If anybody does need prayer, come on up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the anointing that's resting so heavily over this service. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that is moving and operating for your lives are being loosed right now. Shifts are being made. Breakthroughs are being given. In the name of Jesus, let us go out of this house declaring the works of the Lord because we have gone through a troop and you've caused us to leap over it and you've given us victory. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great evening. Service tonight at 6.30. See you then.